In this tutorial, you'll learn how to do some mesh moving with Mesh Mover and Maya. So here's one of our uh, pre-comps, one of our earlier developments, with a hole in the background. And I'll show you how to do this, the basic uh, cube. So we'll go to File and After Effects, Import, File, and import the video that we shot. So there's our footage. And you just drag the footage down to the timeline. And then we're going to export this as a JPEG sequence. So go to File, Export, Image Sequence, JPEG, and make sure it's the same frame rate that you, the video was. So ours was 29.97. And there we go. And that I'll export. Now we need to use this so that we can move, use it in tracking in uh, Match Movie. So then we open up. Match Mover 2011. Now you gotta make sure you have these following windows open. The task window, the parameters window, and the main file window. We go to File, Load Sequence, select the first image, and then you make sure the frame rate is what we had from before, so 29.97 was for us. And we'll press OK. So here is uh, the sequence we have in the timeline there. And now we're going to find some track points. So we're going to go to 2D tracking, add a new track, and select it in somewhere of a corner between two different colors, kind of like a, a tip of a, of a post, somewhere where the colors are pretty uh, co high contrast. So you can see when you drag it around on the left hand side, you can see kind of a zoomed in image, and you click and hold that, and then it'll give you a more precise um, view in the center, and then when you're happy with it, you just let go, and uh, there's a checkpoint. So then you go back up to the 2D tracking and select track forward, in which it'll go through the entire JPEG sequence and follow where that dot has moved through the sequence. Now we're going to have to add a few more tracking points. So I'm just going to select another one. Now remember to choose places of corner of objects and such that are always in view. So if you know something's going to you know, um, walk past it, you don't want to choose that because you'll lose some info. So you just track forward it again and you're going to have to do about 9 or 10 of these and try and do some that are vertically uh, versus vertical objects and some that are horizontal objects. So like choosing a ladder and choosing the top and the bottom of the ladder that we can use for reference for later. So um, like see I kind of sped this up. I did about nine tracks I think and kind of gives you more detail the more tracks the better then you go up to 3d scene and you select new coordinate system um, this is where we get to kind of connect some of the dots now these two points here I'm going to use as a frame of reference for distance so the distance is 100 is 100 centimeters so I'm going to go from track 3 to track 4 and that's going to represent uh, the approximate distance of what 100 centimeters is. And here we're going to do our axis now. So this is the x-axis. So we have two points that are chosen. So we choose point 0.6. And then I have to change this to two points. And then choose point 0.7. And then go to the second axis, which is the y. And We'll go back to the two points and go back to what we had before, the track three and track four. They're pretty straight. Then apply this. Now this is going to pop up and it just means that we have to solve the camera. So we have to go to 3D tracking and just click on solve for camera. And that's just going to um, add a camera to the uh, image sequence. So now these, these points, if we switch to 3D view, so we go to the top left hand corner, click on 3D, uh, now we can kind of see everything, aspect of space. 
so we can kind of drag things around. And what we're basically aiming for, using the buttons in the bottom right hand corner, is finding this pla this plane and making it level with the perspective of the ground. Um, so making it larger using the various arrows, the X and Y coordinates, and trying to get the same kind of uh, level and, and, and height as just matching the, the image that we have. So it kind of takes a little, little work, um, tweaking it a little bit. This is probably the most tedious part of the match moving. So I'm just going to speed this part up. It's uh, it's going to take a little while to go through, dragging the plane closer to the image, and getting it matching perfectly. This is basically where our box in this example is going to lie on. Now we just need to export this. So you go to File, Export, and save your file. And then we open up. Um, Maya, we're going to create our our cube for this example. So this is going to be a little easier. Uh, took a little while to make that hole. And now that we're in Maya, we uh, go to the surface tab, and you want to select uh, the cube. So you click and drag to select the surface, the the, the 2D version, and then you drag up to select, making it more of a cube rectangular shape. Now uh, using the smooth surface all button and then uh, give this a uh, nice even texture and then uh, you can just try and drag that right cube around if you want get a different look at it. If you go to file import we can import our um, match moving um, file so that way we can get the uh, track points that we did before and with that uh, you have to add the perspective so you go to panels perspective and the file that we had before and that kind of brings it there and that kind of um, locks into place so you can see if we play it it shakes accordingly to where the camera shook in our previous footage and then next you have to go to view image plane import image and this is where we uh, we created the image previously just a, a green complete square uh, image that you can use as a background and this is allow, allows us to track the image of the cube and put it into our, our footage that we took. So that imports right there. And on the top right you click on render settings where you go under file output and select the format for JPEG and the extension to be name underscore number and that kind of gives you kind of a sequence of numbers for all the images. Now the frame range, uh, you can find the frame range in terms of how many frames. Um, in the bottom right hand corner we have 187 as our example. So that's how, where you want it to end. And of course the image sides, you should make it accordingly to the footage you took. So ours was in 720p. Um, that being done, we can go to render and select batch render. Now this part takes probably the longest in terms of the computing and the, the power needed. It opens up a little box and it, and it takes us a JPEG of each frame of where the cube was, that was moving accordingly uh, to the tracking that we made. So we kind of sped this up. Uh, it doesn't actually happen in real time here. Uh, I wish though. <laughs> but now that that's complete. Uh, you can close this and open After Effects where we um, started this whole thing. So back we see our footage. Now we need to um, import a JPEG sequence. So you go to File, Import, File. And looking around for where... So we select the first file and the rest will just go into there uh, since we clicked on JPEG sequence they'll um, all pop in at the same time and drag that down to our our timeline put it right there um, so now we got really green this is pretty easy part so you go to effects keying uh, and select key light 1.2 and you do the screen color get rid of the green and there it is
pretty quick. You can see that the box actually follows the the tracking of the camera. So that's basically how you do this. This is um, pretty decent tutorial, and that's the end.